Hello and welcome to VCSP Tech Hub. In this video we're going to discuss Vim Backup Application and Vim Cloud Connect initial installation process. My name is Ivan and I'm a senior cloud system engineer for Vim. Why do we put those two different topics together in one video? The reason is that Backup Application and Cloud Connect is basically the same product from the perspective of installation file. The difference is the license you choose during the installation or when you use the server. So when you install backup application license into it, connect as your main backup server to protect your hosting environment or a server which can protect your customer's on-premise data, make on-premise replicas, protect file servers and uh, physical servers on your customer side. When you choose Cloud Connect license, however, it's when you need to receive backups from your customer's on-premise environment or when you need to receive replicas from the customer side. So this way you will enable offsite backup capabilities and disaster recovery capabilities for your customers. And as I've mentioned the use cases, let's discuss all of them. So there are six base use cases we're talking about with service providers. One is service provider data protection, so it's basically protecting your hosting environment, giving the self-service capabilities for your customers to allow them protecting machines themselves and having restores themselves. Then it's MSP backup when you're protecting customers on-premise data, on-premise virtual machines, agents, file servers. And then you need Cloud Connect in this case on the service provider side in order to remotely manage those backup replication installation and to unlock the powerful Vim service provider console. On the middle end you can see offsite backup and disaster recovery as a service. In this scenario, you need to install Cloud Connect on the service provider side and Vim Backup Replication Server on the customer side to send out the data. Service provider will act as a multi-tenant repository. Disaster Recovery as a Service is basically a cloud host where customer replicates his virtual machines and then can activate Disaster Recovery as a Service if something goes wrong on their side. Azure and AWS Data Protection, on the other hand, is uh, managed by a backup replication server for service providers. So you install backup replication, then you can deploy Azure or AWS appliances directly through the backup replication interface. Then you can manage the backups from there and initiate the restores from, directly from the backup replication server. Last but not least, software as a service data protection. This one is Vim Backup for Office 365. And one of the scenarios of giving the self-service for your customers when they want to restore Office 365 data is when they install backup replication as well as explorers. And on your side, you're protecting the customer's data and through Cloud Connect, the customer can restore their own data using explorers without involving the service provider or service provider help desk. Now let's talk a little bit about the requirements. So, system requirements for Vim Backup Replication or Cloud Connect installation are quite straightforward. Basically, you need a Windows Server uh, and two CPU cores plus one per each, per each 10 concurrent tasks. So, those requirements for 10 concurrent tasks in one core is basically for Backup Replication Server as it's orchestrating the tasks, creating them, managing them, etc. If we are talking about Cloud Connect, the requirements are not that strict. So you can receive more backups from your customers without the need to increase the amount of resources. For more detailed system requirements, please refer to the corresponding article on our help center. As of RAM, you just need 4 gigs of RAM and 4 additional gigs per each 10 concurrent tasks. Again, it's only related to Vim Backup Replication. As of the disk space, in total it's about 10 gigs for the whole installation, plus 10 gigs per 100 VMs for guest file system catalog. I would recommend have, allowing more than 10 gigs of space for, for the installation directory because also there will be logs generated, there will be some other auxiliary files. So please, you know, make this machine enough space to process those temporary files and uh, to be future-proof. As of the network, there are two aspects. One is on-site processing, so let's say you are protecting your hosting. So for comfortable job processing, one gigabit per second is the way to go or higher than that. 
as of the off-site backup or disaster recovery, 1 megabit per second or higher. And if we are talking about those figures 1, 5, 50 megabits per second, one accelerator might be really handy in the, those scenarios. As of the database, Vim Backup Relocation ships with SQL Express Edition, which is limited to up to 10 gigs in size and can use up to 4 CPU cores. So in addition to that you need to add uh, 4 gigs of RAM per each 25 concurrent tasks. So if you have more than 25 concurrent tasks, we would recommend you to move from SQL Express to SQL Standard to higher. As of downloading ISO file, it's quite simple. You just go to vim.com, open download section, then select Vim Availability Suite if you want to download both Vim Backup Replication and Vim 1, or download just Vim Backup Replication ISO file. And now let's jump into the demo to check out the exact installation steps. Here we have a brand new deployment with Windows Server installed. We already downloaded ISO file and just double clicked in order to mount it. So now we can go ahead and install it. We just double click here, splash screen pops up. Here we can choose what do we want to install. Vim backup replication, again, this option is to choose if you want to install backup replication or if you want to install Cloud Connect. Vim Backup Enterprise Manager, on the other hand, is a web-based extension of Vim Backup Replication, allows managing multiple backup replication servers. Let's say you have multiple data centers and each data center wants to go, is quite independent, so you need to install backup replication on each location and you can centrally manage it through the Backup Enterprise Manager. Then it's Backup Replication Console. If you want to connect remotely to the backup replication server, then you may need to install the console in order to uh, open it up the connection to the backup replication server. And last but not least, Enterprise Application Plugins. It's basically Vim plugin for Oracle or Man, Vim backup for SAP HANA, and more on that coming up in the future. In this case, we're going to proceed with Vim backup replication installation. Now we need to wait a little and so that some checks will be performed in the background whether we have the required software already installed in place. Once it is loaded, what we need is we need to read the user agreement, accept the terms, accept the terms for third-party components, then click Next. Here you can locate the license file in case you want to install a receiving and a cloud connect on your hosting environment to receive the data from customer on-premises or to deploy Vim Service Provider Console. You choose Vim Cloud Connect license here. If you want to protect your hosting environment or if you want to install it on customer side just to protect from data locally, then you choose Rental Backup Replication license key. So if you don't choose any license key, then the, then the backup replication will be installed in the community edition and you can actually install the license later on. So no worries if you don't have license at the moment, you can still perform the installation and provide the license later on. Here we hit next. Then we can check which program features will be installed. Backup replication is centerpiece of all of that. Vim backup catalog is responsible for storing guest file indexing. So allows our Vim Enterprise Manager to browse backup content without the need to mount actual backup. And it's backup replication console. Console which allows to connect to this backup replication server and manage it. Here you can also change the installation folder. We will stick to default one. So in this step we are going to perform the system configuration check to verify that all of the required components are installed. As you can see here, we don't have all of the comp components available at the moment. So what we need to do is just hit install to install them. As you can see it's done. Now all the components are there. We just can proceed and click next. At this stage we can verify the installation folder, the write cache folder which is responsible for instant recovery operations. Where do we store the cache if we run the machine off the backup yeah, and we make some changes to it. So then the catalog to store the indexing data, some of the ports, as well as service account. But we can actually change some of the settings if we click on this checkbox. At this step you can define whether you want to use local system account, which is recommended, or use your domain or workgroup account instead. So under this account the service will run, 
and uh, if you choose your domain account please make sure that if you have password change procedure going on then make sure to change password in time otherwise if you reboot the server the service couldn't start wouldn't be able to start because of the incorrect password we'll stick to local system in this installation hit next now here we can choose whether we install new SQL instance here or we use the existing one in this case we already had the installation performed before on this server so we can use the existing instance in case you're having a brand new installation you can select the first bullet and perform a brand new installation of SQL Express if you have SQL standard or SQL enterprise in your infrastructure you can hit browse and select the corresponding server to place the database in there then you can give the different name to the Vim database by default it's Vim backup I would leave with that just you know for the, for the sake of this example we will you know just add one here then in order to connect to the SQL server you can choose e either it will be Windows based authentication or SQL based authentication up to you here and depends on whether you're using remote backup remote SQL server or local one which is installed together with Vim then we hit next and here we can choose the ports which are going to be used during the installation so catalog service port backup service port your connections and restful API if you change the default settings please make sure to make notes for yourself because all of the Vim documentation is based on the default ports listed here then you need to define which folder is going to be used as the instant recovery cache and which folder will operate as a guest file system catalog so for instant recovery cache instant recovery is a restore operation which allows instantly enable uh, instantly open the content of backup and present it to the hypervisor so this will be able to act as a virtual machine right away the issue is that if you write changes you know for example it's a SQL database you're restoring and SQL database generates new transaction logs we need to put those logs somewhere this changes somewhere so we use cache for that purpose to put the data off so make sure that you have enough space on your instant recovery cache especially if you're planning to run instant recovery for you know more than several hours and uh, you know in general if you're planning to prefer su such procedures guest file system catalog on the other hand is responsible as mentioned for the guest file system indexing so which is mainly utilized by enterprise manager in order not to look into the backup exactly but instead just check the indexes and show you the file structure right away and only when you hit restore enterprise manager will actually initiate the mount of the backup we stick with default here and click next then we can review the settings we have configured here and enable the checkbox to check the product updates worth mentioning that you can perform installation in unattended mode so we have a lot of customers which needs which are separate to one another and you need to deploy Vim backup replication on each of them you can refer to Vim user guide in order to perform installation in unattended mode also there are some scripts and automation around the installation process so please proceed to Vim hub which is located on github uh, and check out the useful scripts out there now we hit install here and wait for the product to install and now as the installation is done you can hit finish and then unless you need to install other components like Vim Backup Enterprise Manager you can close the splash screen open the back the backup console one important note is that regardless if you choose to use Vim Cloud Connect license or Vim Backup Replication license the in UI everywhere it will be still Vim Backup Replication console if you choose Cloud Connect license file the additional tab will be present in the UI itself 